Hello everybody, happy Wednesday. Um, I just got back from an hour and a half hike with my friend and her dog Scooby. So Kaya had a great time, she's all tuckered out now, so I figured it was a good time to do my live. Um, April is heartworm, no, it is heartworm awareness month, but I did that video last week. It is Lyme disease prevention for dogs month. So although it can affect cats less frequently, the holiday on the on the page that I look at says specifically for dogs. So I'm just going to talk a little bit about what Lyme disease is, how it works, what the symptoms are, that kind of thing. So you can be aware because actually with all the weather fluctuating, ticks can come out um, whenever the temperature is over 4 degrees. So they do come out quite a bit and I have felt more bugs when I go out for walks now. So it is a good time to learn about all these. So they are carried by ticks as I sort of got to. Um, you'll notice them when your pet itches and they're usually small brown, red, or black specks. Sometimes they move and once they suck your pet's blood, because they are blood suckers, they get bigger. And at some point they will fall off unless you pull them out and they'll start wriggling around and this happened to Kaya last, last fall I think and it was, it was just gross. But we had her checked out and she doesn't have anything so that's really great. Um, but when they suck your pet's blood, they, or your dog's blood in this case, they actually transmit these diseases through sucking the blood. They're most common in areas of high grass or brush, so because I take Kaya up to the forest all the time and the grass is quite high, it is something to look out for. They emerge in the spring, they're active in the summer, and they have a last burst in the fall before the winter comes and the cold sets in. The Lyme disease bacteria transmits within 24 hours, so if your pet is bitten, um, you don't have that long of a time to check for ticks so it's best to check them as soon as they get home from the forest and just give them a once over. Um, your pet will be itchy though if they do have a tick bite because the tick will still be attached. Attached, So it's a good way to look for them. However the symptoms don't appear for two to five months after the dog's been bitten but symptoms include joint pain, swelling, being lethargic, fe having a fever, or the more serious ones, the bacteria attacks the kidney and the nervous system and it can actually, actually result in death or kidney failure. So it's a good thing to check your dog every day, even if they've just been outside or if your backyard has wild grass or trees or we have a big hedge on one side. So it's always good to check for that. Um, there are natural flea and tick options and I have an article which I will post below here that has I forget how many, I think it's one or two, not as many as the heartworm natural alternatives. But if you are looking for one, try, if you are looking for a natural flea and tick prevention, look for ones that have no synthetic chemicals and there's no harmful effects if the pet licks it because a lot of times they will lick the skin after you put something on. So you want to make sure that it's not toxic for them. Um, you want to make sure that all the ingredients that are going into what it is are natural. So if you can't pronounce any of the ingredients or if you look up the chemicals and find out they're actually quite dangerous, I wouldn't use that one. Um, and if you have to get a prescribed flea and tick, then it's probably more chemical filled than non-prescription based ones. But you want to make sure it's one you can use daily if necessary. A lot of the flea and tick prevention is per month you get a chewable tablet and your pet eats it and those can cost upwards of for a whole year's supply because you give them one a month upwards of two hundred dollars for twelve so it doesn't seem like that per pill but if your dog does contract heartworm or Lyme disease it is a good thing to think about um, another thing is that another criteria when you're looking at flea and tick is that it has a pleasant odor because certain odors will attract pests so if you pick one that is pleasant to you but actually repels pests I know lemon is usually a good one eucalyptus is a really good one as well um, 
and you want to make sure that it doesn't stain the fur. So if you put it on your pet and then it rolls on the carpet or its bed, you want to make sure that it doesn't stain. So that's another really important thing to look out for for Lyme disease. But that is all I have to say for now. Again, the Canadian Pet Expo is this weekend. I am not a vendor, but I'm going as a guest with Kai and I, so if you see us there, you're welcome to come over and say hi. We're quite friendly. Um, that's all I can think about for today. I think the next video is either, hello, um, this weekend or next week, but I'm back on every week, so you're not going to miss me. Um, you're welcome to say hi, who's ever here, by the way. Um, sometimes the comments don't show up but I will check it on my computer afterwards. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty nice weather. It's a little drier than I expected in the forest today, so if you do have time, and hopefully it won't rain again today, like yesterday and the day before, but it is pretty nice weather outside if you want to get out there. I have to go bake some desserts for Easter now and do some work on getting my YouTube channel going. But I will see you for the next pet holiday.